you consider yourself a pushy person? Yes. <laughs> I'm definitely not. Not really. I don't push anybody to do anything. No, not really. Me a pushy person? Nah, I, I you know, I, I'm very respectful. Not really. I'm pretty good, I'm pretty good. <laughs> nah, don't consider myself pushy. Not really, I don't think so. Do you consider yourself a pushy person? Pushy person? Yeah, I could. I consider myself a pushy person. Pushy? Not really, not at all. It depends what kind of mood I'm in, basically. Like, if you catch me in a good mood, then... Yeah, but usually, like, most of the time, I'm respectful. Have you ever tried to push someone to agree with you? Uh, yeah, of course. All the time, actually. Because uh, on the football team, I do that a lot, actually, so... You know, I push myself and I push others. Talking about sports is different, but like in general, I don't try to like push people. I do it all the time. I just make them do stuff I want if I'm like lazy. Just if I want like something. Sometimes I push them until I get it. Well, yeah, sometimes I guess. I want, I want to go to this party and my friend didn't want to go because it was a long drive and he didn't feel like driving. But I told him I would throw him money for gas and everything and to have a good time once I got to the party. And it turned out that we got into a big argument and we really don't talk anymore. Yeah, I have pushed, you know, helped people push the green me, but usually because they're making a stupid decision, you know, like, you know, like, you know, don't do that or you can get arrested, you know, or, you know, don't do that because that's a ripoff. Some people need to convince you that they are always right. We've all met people that argue or use manipulation in until you agree with them. And they don't give up easily. Do you think you're a pushy person? Or do you know someone who is like that? What about your faith? Are you pushy about sharing your faith? Do you try to make others believe the way you do? That's what we'll be talking about today. Sharing your faith versus being pushy with people. Hi everyone, I'm Jack. And I'm Catherine. And, and this, this is, is Real Faith, faith TV. TV. I do like to share my faith with others, but I don't think I'm pushy about it. <laughs> you not pushy, okay. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm not pushy either, and, you know, but I do like to get my faith out there and share it and stuff. I mean, look at this, look at Real Faith TV. You know? That's a prime example. <laughs> Our spotlight guest today is Joe Mattingly, composer and director of the Newman Singers, a musical group based out of the Catholic Student Center at the University of Iowa. He will tell us how their group of 30 to 40 young adults share their faith through music. And they don't try to be pushy about it. We'll meet him later in the show. But first, let's meet our studio guests and find out if they think they're pushy. They are Matt, Jessica, Kira, Ijama, Matt, and Julie. So, do you consider yourself to be a pushy person? Have you ever tried to push someone to agree with you? I do. In school, like when people are wrong or when I think they're wrong, I'm always just like, what are you talking about? That's not right. And I like yell at them. And like when teachers make mistakes when they write on the board, I'm like, okay, that's spelled wrong. Just fix it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like that too. Like when I think I'm right and I see like someone else is doing something wrong, I really like try and get to them, tell them that they're wrong and get them to change it. Yeah, I'm definitely the, the same way where someone will be trying to argue with me or something about like politics. I like to argue about politics. And then I'll be explaining my situation. They'll try to talk. They'll be like, no, no, don't talk. The door over there, go, leave. Because like <laughs> my way is the right way. Like that, that's kind of like how I do it. I'm kind of, I'm very pushy. I know. I'm so confrontational in history classes, any kind of po political situation. I'll be, I'll fl I've flat out said, and I, it's kind of a fault because I'll just be like, you're wrong. Let me tell you why. Like that's, that's awful, but it's so pushy. Yes. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, thanks. I don't really think I'm pushy, but like when someone will tell me their opinion, tell me I'm wrong, I'll push back. Like I'm really opinionated, but I won't like force my opinions on other people. I know when I'm talking to people, I try not to force my opinions on people, but it automatically just happens. But I try to stay away from that. I do like the same thing as Matt, but like I like when people don't have an opinion, I will force it on them like nothing else because um, I could just change someone and put someone on my side instead of like you know <laughs> having an argument with them in the future. I definitely have to agree with that. I know it's a lot easier to teach someone when they don't have an opinion and you're kind of the first person that puts something in their head and uh, I have to admit I'm, I'm like that. You know if someone really isn't sure what they think I try and persuade them a little toward my way initially. One of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is kindness. When we're actively seeking God's grace in our lives, this attribute shines through. As one Buddhist philosopher said, kindness in words creates confidence. 
Kindness is one of the ways to overcome our own tendencies to be pushy. And encouraging kindness in others helps them resist the urge to be pushy. Do you have any friends or acquaintances who are pushy and try to sway you toward their opinion or what they believe in? That's what we ask the teens on the street. Let's check it out. Share an experience you've had with others being pushy towards you. Uh, she makes me go get stuff when she's lazy yeah. and like do things like get her drinks and stuff. How do you respond when she's trying to push you around or, or um, be in charge of you? Usually, usually I accept it or I get grouchy and don't do it. When I was uh, growing up, actually, a couple of my older friends pushed me around to you know, succeed. But uh, sometimes I've been pushed for wrong things also, but you know, it's your choice and what you have to do. I'm like a negative attitude. I don't like to be pushed around and everything. Stand up for myself and what I believe. And like, as soon as they try to push me into something I don't want to do, then I don't want to like, be hanging out with them. I don't want to get myself into trouble and everything. Trying to get me to do things I didn't want to do, like go places and stuff, I didn't really feel like going. And trying to hang out with people I didn't want to hang out with. There's a lot of situations like that where people try to like, you know, get you to do stupid stuff. Like, you know, hey, we're going to do, I'm not going to say, we go do something blank and come with us. And you realize that's just a dumb idea. <laughs> you know, just tell them no. And, Kind of walk away while laughing because you know they're going to get in trouble and say that. Some people push lots of things like whether it be drugs or drinking or like religion's a big thing people push sometimes. Like Jehovah Witnesses or other people that come to your door and just ask questions. My response to, to you know somebody trying to push you know push their opinion or push their decision upon me you know I usually like you know I get an attitude, I get loud, you know I cuss, you know I you know I fuss, you know that basically you know you know, I, you know, or I ignore them, you know? Uh, I get mad and tell them to back off. I just walk away from them. People know that I won't budge easily. I mean, I'll argue for like my, like what I believe, but I'm not gonna like try to force on anybody else. So like if they're trying to tell me what to do, I'm just gonna be like, this is what I think and leave it at that. Do any of you know people like that? People who have tried to push you around? Oh yeah, there's um, a lot of people in my school that are like that, they're very headstrong and they think they're right. Most of the times, if you get into like a heated quarrel with them, they'll slap you down, and I would always try to push back, but it doesn't work. <laughs> I've seen these two, there's two kids in particular that come to mind that always go at each other day after day after day after day in class, like outside of class, when they're playing sports, all the time. They just go at each other, but I've never had to, I just watch it. <laughs> I think everyone's pushy every once in a while. You know, it just kind of happens. I mean, people have their opinions, but... When they try and force it on you, I think sometimes the best thing to do is just kind of ignore it or give them a little, yeah, you're right, and then they kind of get the picture. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. With me, like, if someone's pushy, like, I'm a pushy guy, so it, it turns into this big butting heads kind of thing. But, you know, at, at the same time, I'm not, like, mean and pushy. So a lot of times we can kind of be like, all right, we'll agree to disagree, you know, like that kind of thing. So if you notice, most of the teens on the street didn't like pushy people. And they didn't like being pressured at all. I don't think that being pushy is the best way to get someone to believe what you believe. Joe Mattingly also agrees with this. Although the Newman singers openly share their faith through music, they aren't pushy about it, just enthusiastic. Let's meet Joe Mattingly now and find out how he and the young people he works with share their faith through their music. Our, our goal was to share the gospel message and to do it with music in a way that we felt was spiritually uplifting, that was musically uplifting, that would pe get people to their feet and, and get them excited about God, get them excited about their relationship with Jesus. There's an incredible excitement to working with a group of young people. Their energy and their excitement and their faith is, is very fresh and it's very alive. They have a lot of ideals, they, they really have a strong desire to do something that they feel is going to make the world a better place that through the excitement that, that uh, we feel in the music and that we hope to share, that people will walk away and, and they'll, they'll feel like, yes, there is hope for the world, there is hope for young people. They'll feel like they have come a little closer to God and they've come a little closer uh, to, their, to their fellow human beings. For us, this music and this ministry is not about pushing our faith. It is about sharing uh, a relationship that we have with each other, a relationship that we have with God, and just by way of example, showing people that this is a good thing, that, that God can do wonderful things in our lives. It's about living the gospel message. And uh, we try to make the, the message come across in a, in a very um, simple way so that people feel invited in, uh, but they don't feel like they're being forced in. 
I really like the way they use music to share their faith because, you know, I think there's a difference between sharing your faith and pushing your faith. It's kind of like show and tell, where showing somebody, you're, you're putting it on the table, you're letting them look for themselves, you know, and telling somebody you're putting it in their hands and kind of saying, okay, this is it, you know. I think people respond better to showing rather than telling. I think when they have a chance to kind of respond to it, that's, that's when they respond better. I really like that analogy. I hope that's the way my friends see me, sharing my faith by my example and the way I live my life. What about the rest of you? Do you share your faith with others? And if you do, how do you do it? Well, first off, I share my faith by being on the show. Mm -hmm. And um, I usually tell my friends to watch and, you know, listen in sometimes whenever they get the chance. And other than that, I basically, um, I talk to someone about it. And I, I don't, like, force it on them. I just, just graze the subject and just, like, you know, just talk about it very little bit. I kind of just try to like set an example because any other way I feel like I am being pushy. Like if someone expresses an interest, I'll like, you know, talk to them about it. But if they kind of seem distant and they're not interested, I won't really bring it up because that means they're not interested. A lot of times if like someone would sleep over my house, like from a Saturday to a Sunday and Sunday's always church day at my house. So I would ask to be like, you want to come like see what it's like because people that are of different religions are sometimes interested to see what it's like. So that's, but I don't think I'm pushy about it. I think the best way probably to share your faith with someone is to just lead by example by, you know, doing good things. And I mean, it could be little, it could be something big, but either way they'll recognize it as an act of faith. I like to share my faith by uh, just doing kind actions towards people. I think that's the best way to go about doing it. Love is the point of the Christian life. In the Bible, in 1 Corinthians, we read, Love is patient and kind. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered. If someone's being pushy, it's an action that does not come out of love. Pushiness is selfish. It suggests that the person's time or agenda is the thing that matters most. As Catholic Christians, we strive to be less selfish and more giving. To be patient and kind. Next, Joe Mattingly tells us what he thinks is the key to sharing your faith. Well, I think the key to, to sharing your faith is, is to, first of all, is to live your faith in a, in a way where you're, you're not standing you know, on a rock, you know, telling people that they must come and they must see things your way, they must believe the way that you believe because I think we all experience God in, in different ways. For us, it's primarily through our, our ministry of music. For another person, they may experience God in, in some, through some other vehicle, another uh, method that, that that person might feel closer to God. And I think that's wonderful too. But this is the way that works for us. It's not our place to tell them how God is going to uh, be a part of, of their, their lives. And so we just want to, to do our music and if they want to come and share that with us, uh, we're, we're thrilled for that, but we're, we're not here to force it on, on them. You know, the gospel message, is, it's a way of living. It's, it's not a way of, of, of sort of telling people how to live, but it's the way that I live personally, and I, and I hope that through that, people will see that uh, God is present in my life, and that God means something to me personally, and I think the singers uh, feel this way as, as well. We're attempting to, to live the message without forcing other people uh, to believe the way that we believe. We want them to see it in us and get excited because of that. I agree that the key to sharing your faith is to live it. So what do you guys think? What do you think is the key to sharing your faith? I think the best way to share your faith is just to do what Jesus would do. Just be kind to others and share what you have and just help others when they're in need. And also, you shouldn't, like, force it, like... Yeah, because pushing people, it's like a turn-off. It's, I don't know, it's hard. Like, I knew this guy, like, I just did a show, and he was giving out prayer cards before the show. And, like, if people don't want them, they could throw them away. And if people were interested, like, he, like, offered to drive them to church and everything. And I just thought that was really good because he saw who was interested, and then he took the extra step. Yeah, I, like, providing opportunities, like, my youth minister did that. That's how I got involved with this. But like she always provides opportunities for anyone who's interested to do things to like strength, strengthen their faith as well as like invite others. I agree with not being pushy because I think that when you are pushy, then right off the bat, people aren't going to want to listen to you. You're not going to really get a response from them. But by not being pushy and by kind of just putting it out there so they can kind of 
um, I guess, accepted themselves and, you know, they'll respect that a lot more and they'll really listen to what you have to say as opposed to shutting you out. Give them the option to try to take your faith and spread it to them. And if they're not willing to accept it, just let them do what they must. St. Francis of Assisi said, Preach the good news always. Use words when necessary. One of the best contemporary examples of someone who shared her faith without being pushy was Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Mother Teresa didn't preach about Jesus to the poor. She showed Jesus to them in a way that she cared for and loved them. Her life and her work were not, in any way, pushy, but her actions spoke volumes. Next, Joe Mattingly will tell us a little more about the Newman Singers Music Ministry and how they share their faith through their music. He will also share a few stories of people who have been touched by their music. Well, our music ministry is, is, um, has a number of teaching elements to it. Uh, all of our music is, is based upon on the scriptures. As many of the songs are taking, taken directly from the Gospels or they're taken from the Psalms or, or other books uh, in, in the Bible. Uh, also, the method in, in which we portray it, we, we like to sing for, for liturgy, for services. We like to sing, we do give, give concerts, uh, but we like to pray with people. And we hope to do that both when we sing for mass, for liturgy, and when we give concerts and at workshops. Uh, well, we've had a number of experiences uh, along the lines of, of this. Uh, one or two that, that come to mind, we were, we were giving a concert in uh, Kentucky some years ago, a very small town, and at the concert was a lady who uh, had been unable to walk uh, for some time, and, and, and she was there and she, she had a walker, and, and one of the pieces that we do in our concert is a piece called Walk in the Land. It's all, all of, talks about uh, Jesus, walking with Jesus in, throughout the land. And uh, she came up to me after the concert and said that during that song, uh, she felt inspired and that she set aside her walker and she got up and she took several steps and she felt that, that God had, had reached out and touched her through the music. So that was one experience. Um, another experience, I received a letter uh, a few years ago from a lady who had, had told me that she had seen us in concert and then uh, some months later, uh, she and her, her husband became, uh, she became pregnant and uh, she was so excited about the music that she took our CDs and her headphones and she's been holding them up to, to, the, to the woman, playing the music. It's very certain that this was going to, to make the, uh, uh, the child's delivery a, more, uh, a better experience and she was very excited about that. I think it's amazing how their music touches so many people and it definitely shows you you know, this is the way to share your faith. You know, just go out there and kind of just put it out there. You don't, don't force it on people, but if you just kind of do what you, what you like to do in, in, in like a way that shows your faith, it's kind of, you know, people, people will dig that. It'll, it'll be yeah. Good. So what do, you, what do you guys think about that? Well, I think it was absolutely beautiful how um, that old lady just started walking, had the inspiration to walk just, just because of a song that was about walking. And... That's what like the power of faith could do to you. I'm actually I'm in the music ministry at my church, and we've never had anything really as intense as, as that. But just people coming up to you after mass and saying that we did like a really great job and that we made mass more enjoyable. You just you know you get this feeling of pride that you're just you're sharing with your faith with you know other people who even though they do believe it, it's helping you both strengthen it. You kind of build off of each other and it's, it's a good relationship. I'm just wary of those who are too overly showy with their faith. You know, the whole point of being a Christian, well, not the whole point, but you're supposed to worship for different reasons other than to prove to others that how good of a Christian you are. You know, it's, it says that if you're fasting for the Lord, try not to look like you're hungry and just go on with your, your every day. You're not supposed to stand on the corner and pray so everyone can see how holy you are. That's just, that's my only problem with pushiness in religion. This last, this past spring, we did a production of gospel and it was a really good way to show our faith without like pushing or pushing it on people. And afterwards, we got people that came up to us and said how good and how touching it was to them. It was a really good way. I um, read a book that inspired me. Well, it was like a series and it was religious based. And it talks about this girl who, you know, in the beginning wasn't really religious, actually like quite the opposite. And she goes through this whole transformation, which is great. And, you know, it just really inspired me because she did what she loved to show people what she believed. 
And I think that's the best way, like having creative outlets, because that speaks to people and they can relate to it. Yeah, even if it's not creative, like before our math final, me and this boy that goes, I go to church with, we, we prayed to the Holy Spirit to give us strength <laughs> so that we can do well, because but we weren't being pushy or showy about it. We were just doing it because we needed the help. So th that's, it's like doing things that don't make you look like you're pushing your faith on people. I like what we saw about the Newman singers. I think that when they talked about music as a tool to push your faith on somebody, well, not push, but put, make your faith shown to people, it just adds another dimension to what your faith really means. Community is very important to sharing your faith. I know that my youth group experience helps to strengthen me in my faith. Next, Joe Mattingly tells us how the Newman singers are their own faith community where people are free to share their faith as they are comfortable, some openly, others more discreetly. With, within the group, within the Newman Singers, obviously there are people who are at different places with their own faith life. Uh, some of them are, are, are more vocal, they're more open about it, and, and some feel more reserved. They, they feel God in a more personal, in a, in a more subdued way. Uh, we try to create an environment where all of those people can come together and share their faith in one community and do it through the, the, uh, through the ministry of music. That's the thing that binds us all together. So we try to be respectful of that and allow each person to have their own space uh, within the group that, that they can be called to be overly exuberant, exuberant if they wish, or uh, they can be more sedate, more laid back about it as well. These are, are primarily college students between the ages of 18 and, you know, early to mid-20s. Mid and like I, I mentioned, they're, they're very excited about their faith, but they are at a time in their lives of great change. They've, they've left their families and they've come away to college and they're looking for new experiences. They're, they're looking for new ways to share their faith. They're looking for a new family that they want to become a part of. Uh, in this group, we hope to provide an environment where they can grow, where their faith can grow. They can reach out to the people in the group, they can reach out to other people, but they can experience God in, in new and, and wonderful ways that will help them to grow as, as young, um, you know, adult, faith-filled people. Where have been the places that you've felt comfortable sharing your faith? Or the places where you've felt your faith has really grown? I think I'm pretty much comfortable sharing my faith anywhere. Because, I mean, it's part of what makes me, me, as odd as that sounds. You know, I mean, you can't be afraid to, you know, talk about your religion or, you know, share something that you feel strongly about with others just because of a certain environment. I mean, obviously, you're not going to go out there and once again be pushy about it. But I think being open about it pretty much anywhere is the way to go. At school, since I go to Catholic schools, it's easier to share my, share my faith. We do, like, small services and little shows and stuff and that's a good way to put it out there. I know for me um, in like the fall of this year I went to uh, I went to the National Catholic Youth Conference and it was just thousands and thousands of these uh, teenage Catholics from all over the country and it, it was just really a great way to share your faith and everything because you're gathered together with this huge mass of people who feels the same way you do. So, you know, you can share it however you want. And it really just strengthened my faith and brought me to a, to a better place uh, as far as faith goes. You know, it, it strengthened my faith, my faith and like, you know, made me into a better uh, Catholic. Yeah, even in school, we did this like culture festival and I had to like share my faith openly, but that's something I enjoyed because people respected it, if you respect theirs as well. I shared my faith at this retreat I went on in my school, and I thought my faith really grew through the experiences that I went through. I know lots of people, like a lot of my friends, they'll come to me with questions that they have, you know, periodically about, you know, something that says in the Bible, or because sometimes I'll be able to answer them. And I think a large portion of the problem of, of what people have is they just, they don't know how to say, I don't know. I think as far as sharing your faith, you have to be comfortable enough with it to, to, if someone asks you a question and you don't know the answer, just to be like, I don't know. Because they'll respect you a lot more for it if you say that than if you try and shape it into something it's not. 
I think it's just really important to talk to people one on one and like to be confident. Like sure you're going to be intimidated because you don't know what they're going to think and stuff, but you know if it's important and if it needs to get done that God will be with you. He will. And you know, I know that for myself through my experience with campus ministry at my school. It's really helped me to just be secure in my faith and know that God's behind me when I share it with others. Scripture reminds us in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28 that a person without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. When we feel like our lives have been ransacked, we can start pushing others around in order to protect our hearts from the inside out. When we see others who are pushy because they feel vulnerable, we can reach out and offer the security of God's love. Remember, even though Jesus stands at the door of our hearts and knocks, He never opens the door. He doesn't push His way through. Today, let us choose to be more like Jesus, who makes His presence known, but waits with patience and love and doesn't push His way through. Let us also be the ones who respond to Jesus' knock and let Him into our lives. How do you share your faith? We want to know. Contact us through our website. The address is www.realfaithtv.com Or you can call us at 609-406-7402. And one final thought. People of faith have an obligation to stand up for what is just and right. We need to share the gift of faith we have received and speak up for those who have no voice. This sacred responsibility requires humility and prayerfulness. Pushing your belief on another person is inconsistent with the gospel message. There is a respectful way to proclaim the good news of God's truth and of life. Being firm in our beliefs doesn't mean being pushy. It means being faithful and loving and allowing others to come to the truth in God's time rather than our own. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.